Hi there, everybody. This is Holy Night. I am your host, Austin. My co-host, Devin, cannot make it to the show today, but no big deal. The show must go on. I have a big guest on the show. We got Jeffrey Scott on the show. Welcome to the show, Jeffrey. Uh, hello, Austin. Good to be here. Um, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, let's get right to it. Friday the 13th game is now out. Now, people are very salty as a pretzel because other servers are being down. That's what I heard. According yeah. to iHeart.com, the servers are still down at least. I don't know why the servers are down, and that makes me very nervous about buying the game. And there's only a limited content on the game. They have not updated anything yet. So, what's yeah. going on with it? I actually bought that uh, the day it came out. And I have to say, it was fun. But I got in a total of uh, two matches before the servers kicked me off. And it's pretty frustrating because I did charge $40 for this. And it feels very unfinished as far as stability goes. And that's why I'm not paying for it until it's fully updated. Um, yeah, it's kind of the cost of going with, um, I mean, these guys got their money from Kickstarter. They're not really a professional company, so it was a gamble, probably one that I lost, but it happens. And that's why I know I don't, I only buy sport games like Matt and NFL, and not those kind of games, you know you're going to get your money's worth because they are fun to play. I, I'm not a fan of those personally. Um, the games can be fun, but like, what do they update every year other than rosters? Um, I just I don't see where the sixty dollars really comes into play. Like, what's the difference between Madden fourteen and seventeen other than like you know tweaks? Yeah, true. So, yeah, you make a big point of that. Now let's go to Gremlins two with you. I just recently saw Gremlins two. Now let's. Uh, I have a scale of 5 to 10. 5, it gotta be some cute goos in it, gotta be some comedy in it, gotta be blood and color, supernatural, all that stuff, and yeah, my 10 is everything. And I'll give it a 5, because Blooming Sue is funny. Belle's in the first one, and here's what, just Hulk Hogan is in it. Do you really think Gremlins 2 is better than uh, Gremlins? I pretty sure, yeah, pretty sure because here's why, because one of the Gremlins has this, um, potion or chemical and he drinks it and it turns to a female. And that was the funniest scene, well, almost one of the funniest scenes in the movie. I gotta say, man, the uh, first Gremlins were like the old lady, I don't remember her name, is on the chair and it just smashed her through the window. That was um, my favorite move. That was my favorite scene too in that movie. Yeah, like I, I like Gremlins too, but I feel like it wasn't as effortless as Gremlins. Like original Gremlins is just slapstick, uh, Tom Fuller. It's just like crazy, right? And then Gremlins too, they kind of forced some of the jokes. It wasn't bad. Like I like Gremlins too. Most people like Gremlins too, but it just got too goofy for me personally. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the Gremlins um, mocked the old woman that passed away in the moon, the first one. That was funny. So, it was one of the scenes that uh, the Gremlins were having a party at the ball, and one of the Gremlins was wearing a scarf or something, mocking the old woman. It was funny, so. So. Yeah. Not sure I remember that scene, but I might just be forgetting that. Well, you know, that's cool. Now, to all those fans out there who have Netflix, Sick Day 1 and 2 is now streaming on Netflix. Now, I've seen the first one. Now, the first, now, Sick Day 1 was great. I love it because Danielle Harris is in it. I love it. That was probably one of the best vampire movie I've seen. Uh, now, can you run by what what movie is this again? Steak Land. Oh, Steak Land, yeah. Steak Land was pretty good. I like that. Yeah. And um, not only that, let me endure up for a little bit. Last weekend, I saw my um first time ever seeing The Fright Night with Colin Farrell in it and all those other 
Star Wars in it. It was a great movie. So many cute goos in that movie. Uh, the remake or the original? The remake. Okay. Did you like the remake? I loved it. See, I didn't hate it, but the original Fright Night for me is just such a kind of stamped in horror history. I, I feel like updating it might not have been the best decision. Um, yeah, that's cool though, man. Um, it's Horror Night Podcast talking about Fright Night, you know? Right? I haven't even seen the original yet, which I'm still, that's on my list to watch. Uh, I'd recommend it. I had a Blu-ray, um... For a while, but they got pretty expensive, so I ended up selling mine to buy some other Blu-rays. But it's a good movie. Um, I like it. Um, you know, um, and as we talk about Daniel Harris, I'm just going to give a shout out to Daniel Harris. Happy late birthday. Her birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Harris. Um, now, here's a huge news. Adam Wingard. It's going to direct the God, Godzilla vs. King Kong 2020 film, which I'm very happy. I, yeah. so, I was so freaking pumped when I heard Winger was getting this. Um, yeah, he's probably the best director in horror the last few years. Um, I mean, The, get, the Guest, uh, You're Next, uh, The New Blair Witch. He just has such a stellar track record. And um, I'm excited to see him do a big studio project, especially one that maybe has some more freedom in it than, like, you know, Avengers where you got to have so much of this star or so much of this star. Um, I'm excited. I have yet to see the new King Kong movie called The Skull Island, which I've yet to see it, because Samuel Jackson is in that movie. Yeah, it, I, I saw that opening weekend. Um, I like Kong in it. But the human characters were very, uh, bland for me. And, like, Brie Larson just won an Oscar. I mean, this girl can act, but the characters she's getting in this movie is just kind of, like, stereotypical, you know, I don't take no crap woman. And I thought like they could have expanded more on her, on, um, pretty much all the main characters. So I'm just hoping the MonsterVerse doesn't have a bunch of just bland main characters. Because now Godzilla, I feel, did. King Kong, I feel, did, and that kind of worries me. Yeah. So, we'll see. Um, now that remake of The Blob, The Blob, is still happening, and now, Hell Billy is set to start in the film. Now, I have no clue in the hell is The Blob. I've never seen it, and I probably never will. But, um, was, uh, Sam Jackson, is he still attached to it? I I have no clue. I just read it a couple uh, days ago, so. Uh, it, the movie's been like vapor. It went from like Rob Zombie to Sam Jackson, and now to Hal Berry. Like, I know. I, I don't know if I'm gonna believe this until I see it. Uh, Rob's well, a pretty goofy movie. Uh, you said you never seen it. Yeah, never seen it. Um, well, there's three main ones. It's uh, The Blob. Uh. The Blob Returns, I think. I don't really remember. It might be called Son of Blob. That, um, that one really sucked. And then um, the Blob remake from the 80s. That's the one I think most people remember. Yeah. Um, it's a pretty gruesome movie. Some great practical effects, though. Um. Now, moving on. Now, my take on the movie The Mummy. Now, The Mummy, the new one, comes out very soon. And now... The big name superstar is in that movie, Tom Cruise. Now, Tom Cruise is a great actor. I have truly, truly respect for him and the acting industry with Tom Cruise. But he's going to probably m miss up everything about the Mommy franchise. Because I love the Mommy franchise so much, I don't think he's going to do good in it. I just don't. You respect him so much as an actor, uh, why don't you want to see him in the movie? I mean, the original cast members went, I can't remember all of them, but... Uh, there's Brendan Fraser, right? Before yeah, Brendan that. Fraser was in it, and I loved him. He's a great actor, too. But, um, wait, I, I could be wrong, I could be wrong. Tom Cruise might do good. Who knows? Oh, and Russell Crowe is in it, too, so... That's another big actor, so... I, I don't remember the last time I just was like, wow, 
Tom Cruise is in this movie. I'm excited now. Like, I liked Edge of Tomorrow a lot. Um, I didn't hate Jack Reacher, but, like, damn, he hasn't had a great movie. Other than Edge of Tomorrow, which he was only okay in. I mean, Emily Blunt stole that thing in a while. Like, come on, Cruise. I mean, I saw the trailer of it, and it looks sick. So I could be wrong about him, but I'm going to watch it and see. Now, I could be wrong, but I think he can do good, but who knows? When he pulls himself out of that body bag, that is a hype moment. Um, Because he's like now the mummy, right? He's coming back from the dead. It's some cool shit. Oh, yeah, completely. Now, um, I haven't not watched this TV show in a while, but according to Shores, Supernatural's the CW channel, Mark Shepard, said like he's not ever coming back to the show. Dude, I don't know if you saw this. They're doing a Scooby Doo crossover episode on Supernatural. Yeah, like, I heard of it. <laughs> how, how, how ridiculous is that? Um, that's what happens when you get 14 seasons of a show that's essentially like Hot Man Buns 1 and Hot Man Abs 2 just running around just punching demons. Like... That show hasn't been good in literally 10 years. That's how long it's been on. It's stupid. Completely stupid. Um, now, Short Nando comes out August 6th. Now, I cannot wait for that. I haven't even seen the first one yet. I mean, there's like a bunch of them. Yeah, like one to five. One to five, so. I'm trying to remember. I saw two of them at Rift Tracks. It was, uh, it was a good time. Um, I think I saw one of the other ones. What is it? It's uh, Sharknado. Yeah. Sharknado two. I don't know what the second was called. Sharknado. Oh hell no! And the fourth, Awakens. Yeah. Right. I don't think I've seen the one where they, the fourth. Is that where they do in space? I think I have no clue. <laughs> I want a ridiculous franchise. That's what I love about like just you know low budget like schlock. You can just have the stupidest idea and everyone will like just fall in love with it. It's great. Very great. That's, that's how horror community comes about. I mean, there's a big list of so many horror movies, so many horror actors and actresses out there, and it's great, so. Um, so, my first question, um, is, um, what is your favorite horror movie? Oh, man, see, that is, like... Probably the most difficult question you could ask a horror writer, man. But, um, I can give you one of my favorites, uh, The Thing from 1982, the John Carpenter version. I think I've seen that movie before, like, a thousand times. Um, yeah, for me, it's, uh, probably the most shocking film ever made in terms of its execution. Like, not counting movies that, like, say well or, um, a certain film which have shocking content matter. The thing just has so much expert tension done into it. Um, the jump scares feel earned. Like, I don't want to spoil it too much. I guess I don't want to spoil it. But the figure later scene, the guy's chest just bursts open, bites off the dude's arms. To me, that was one of the most... That right there with the face hugger and um, Alien on um, the chest burster. But the thing has that, like, over and over. It's, it's just glorious. Yeah, um, now, my favorite movie, I have so many other favorite movies, but one of my movies that stands out to me is Zombie Strippers. Ah, Zombie Strippers, because it's, um, Tays and Undead, right? It's a great combo. Oh, yeah, it's a comedy, um, um, the guy that does Freddy's in it. Yeah, um, but, um, wouldn't that be, like, gross in real life? Like, just the idea of just something, you know, just pole dancing, just little bits of flesh flying everywhere, you know, just sounds kind of gross. Now, if that happened in Linda, if I went to a strip club, and I went to, and it really happened in Linda, that would probably be the biggest turn-on of my, of my life, having a zombie stripper come to life. Now, I wouldn't care if he, she bit me or anything, that would probably be the hardest thing ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a uh, hot chick as a zombie is very attractive. I, I don't know, man. I kind of like my women, like, not rotting, you know? I don't like <laughs> rotting women. 
<laughs> so yeah, so who knows? <laughs> um, uh, I'm now. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, moving on. Now, you said you have some comments that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I own Head on a Stick Productions, and we uh produce um comics and film. We just did uh Don't F in the Woods, which um actually hit number forty one on IMDb. So that's crazy. But my current project is with um my friend in Canada, Yakov Levi, who actually founded these back in twenty ten. It's called Tales from the Whorehouse of Horror. Right? It's like you see comics, uh, Tales from the Crypts, um, you get a nice, nasty narrator, a uh, short little story, uh, normally about revenge, um, exploitation, um, the kind of the gambit as far as uh, horror goes, and a um, cool little twist at the end. It's kind of like Twilight Zone. But ours you know, is the whorehouse of horror, so they're all sexual in nature. Um, we have mummies, uh, clowns, um, we got a lot in this upcoming issue, which we're putting our Kickstarter together right now. I actually had the video I've been editing right before this podcast. Cool, cool. Yeah, I think I've heard of that movie, Not Effing in the Words. I think I've heard of that movie before. Uh, yeah, it was, um, a pretty big success for us. It was a lot of fun. It was cool to get the exposure. And um, when does it come out on one video? Uh, yeah, Don't F in the Woods been out since, um, October, so... Oh, sweet, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start watching it then. Oh, ah, yeah, thanks, man. Because um, I thought, that. I've seen the trailer and it was sick, so... You heard of, uh, Betsy? Yeah. I'm, yeah, Betsy, um, same director, I'm producing that one, too, it's, uh... It's like a werewolf film, but it's a little bit different than kind of your conventional. I like the cover of it. I mean, I like the name, No Effing in the Woods. That's hilarious. <laughs> I think that's why I got a 42 based on the name. It's, it's I mean, the like name is my favorite, so. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't even know how he marketed it, honestly. Like, he censored he the F word and uh, some of the posters and stuff. Uh, but, like, how is Walmart going to sell a movie called Don't Have the Woods? It's crazy. If they don't, then I'm going to be freaked out because they better sell it at Walmart because I'll be buying it at Walmart because all my movies I buy is from Walmart, so. Yeah, I, I can hook you up with a copy, man. Um, I, yeah, I don't know how many he has left, but, yeah, I can get you. You can buy one on the website, um, conceptmedia.com, I think. Or, it's Concept Media's name of the group. I'm not really sure what the website is. I'll check it out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, so you haven't played Friday the 13th, the game? Played at all? Oh, uh, I haven't even bought the game yet. Have you seen, uh, gameplay, I guess? I've seen the gameplay on YouTube, and it's sick, but... I'm very picky about buying horror video games. Now, I want to buy the Resident Evil, the new horror game that came out recently, but it looks like it's so hard to play. Uh, I haven't played Resident Evil 7, because um, I'm not the biggest Resident Evil fan anymore, honestly. And I'm not a big fan of paying $60 for a game that is very short, which I... I think Resident Evil 5 was for me. Resident Evil 6 just stunk. I don't know, I don't feel like the franchise has been good probably 10 years since 4? Was that 10 years ago? I think it's so, I don't know. Jeez. Ah oh, man, dude, just keep getting out uh, order, right? Yeah. Um. Now. Yeah, um. You say it says in my notes that you are uh, white of Hall of Fuel. Tell me yeah. about that. Um, yeah, I'm a horror journalist. I started with the, the bloodshed.com a few years ago. Ended up getting up to head writer on there. But then I moved to Horror Fuel early this year. And I write uh, news reviews and interviews with uh, them on a lot of different aspects of horror. I've got to talk to some cool people. Um, like, have you heard of American Guinea Pig? Nope. Um, yeah, I got to talk with Ace the Chosen One, who played, uh, the go-headed guy, and Bokeh of Guts and Gore. Um, that was a lot of fun, because, like, that guy got interviewed by, uh, 
like, I don't want to say actual horror news, but, like, larger horror news, you know? Like, they, he was interviewed on Blade Disgusting and um, on Rue Morgue. So it's cool that someone a little smaller actually, you know, got a chance to talk with him. Um, according to Bloody Discussion, was just posted not too long ago, it says that the re- um, there is a trailer out for the remake of Inside. Inside remake is thrilling and less oh. bloody. Now, I have yeah. yet to see the movie Inside, but I okay. saw the first one, but who knows what's going to happen. I, I cannot stand these remakes of, uh... French, these French horror movies, like, the extreme French films from the, like, mid-aughts, or, uh, I guess mid-aughts, it's like, what, 2000 slings, right? I don't really know, whatever, you know what I mean. Yeah. Those are just such visceral experiences, um, I mean, anyone who's seen Martyr, I think that's a film that changes you a little bit, and I think it's kind of dumb to try and remake them for American audiences, like, I don't think Americans really have that passion, that do hard cutting art like that. Um, maybe Fincher. Um, have you seen Gone Girl? No. Gone Girl's not as graphic, but I think that had that bleakness that was, you know, present in um, some of those films. And bleakness is not typically an aspect of modern American cinema. Now, one of my favorite movies that I've seen recently was the movie Unborn. That was a good movie. Um, I don't think I've heard of that one. Uh, is it, what's it about? Um, it's about this girl, um, I, I can't remember exactly part from part, but it's about this girl, uh, and she has a baby, and it turns out it's from the devil, and, or something. Yeah, who, who, who are these, like, women that keep getting seduced by demons? I don't know, but it's really attractive, though. The woman or the demon? The woman. Okay. The girl okay. that plays the demon, has the demon baby, is very attractive. Yeah, you, maybe, you think, I don't know, I just feel like, I don't know why these women keep having sex with the devil, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know, it just it seems dumb to me. It's basically, um, it's basically, um, it's kind of like the movie Due Date, but it's ten times different. So it's kind of like the movie, but it's not <laughs> I mean, I can't explain exactly, but... Uh, I, I feel you, yeah, yeah, um... So, who knows? Uh, any really good horror movies so far this year? Um... Um, saying Kang it was still hiding in it. Now, that was a good movie. That come out this year? It came out 2016. Okay, that's... I wasn't sure. But that. it's still kind of a new movie. It's only a year old, so... Yeah, yeah, it counts. Um, man, 2016, uh, The Witch blew me away. For me, that was the breakout work of that year. Um, really kind of bummed me out. So many horror fans hated it. Because it, like... I don't want to call anyone dumb, but I feel like that's a movie that's hard to enjoy unless you kind of look at it from maybe a high... I don't want to say... Once again, I don't want to sound like elitist here, but from, like, a more critical perspective than your average horror film, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know. So far this year, uh, I really like Delco Experiment, like, a lot. Um, and I like it out, although I'm not sure it was, like, as good as some people said it was. But that place really, like, exploded for me. Uh, that place really made me think, wow, that was a new classic. Oh, yeah, completely. Um, now, one last thing before we end the show, um... Please go check out Whole Night on your Facebook page and your Instagram page, which is Dimby Sports Talk. But I also post random horror stuff on there too, so go check that out too. Um, now go check out our public Facebook page called Whole Night. Uh, go join our Facebook page, uh, group, we post everything about the show, update who we have on the guests, 
guests, and everything else go check that out. And I have some big news to announce very soon, which I cannot get no detail, but it's gonna be huge for a whole night podcast. So so stay tuned for that big huge news, which I'm still talking to the guy, but I'm not gonna release no information on this air on this episode yet, but probably next episode I probably will announce it, but who knows what's going to happen. Um, now, I am friends with the CEO of iHorror. I asked him about helping me with my show to, like, promo or show, and he said that he's going to contact me with a writer and about writing an article and help us out, so... Oh man, I can write you an article if you want me to. Nah, nah. <laughs> oh, okay. But, um, that's only a sneak peek of what's going on. Sure, I read for work, you I can do an article. Yeah, you can do that too. We'll contact you, I'll contact you there on. Alright, yeah, sure. Um, now, um, that's the wrap of Horror Night Episode 8. Um, now, Episode 9 will be on June 23rd. I'm going to take two weeks off because I have a vacation trip with family and friends. And go check out Horror Night Episode 8 once it's up there. Episode 6 and 7 is on delay for right now until it be uploaded. So, stay tuned for Episode 9. Uh, please check out our Kickstarter in the description. It's not up right now. It should be up very shortly. And, uh, consider donating. Yep. And uh, may the force be with you, Aang. Hashtag stay scared. Hashtag don't laugh in the woods. Laugh in the woods. Laugh in the woods.